Welcome, everybody, to the NFL Show on the Grueling Truth Sports Network. I am your host for the NFL Show, Mike Goodpaster. Right now, I'd like to welcome in my co-host, as always, from the FF Faceoff, Anthony Servino. How you doing, Anthony? What's going on, Mike? Uh, not much. I'm just kind of disappointed because my Bengals aren't going to win the Super Bowl again this year. But we have a guest today whose team is even more pathetic than mine normally, the Detroit Lions. Help me welcome to the show, Sam McGinnis. How you doing, Sam? I was doing good until you did that. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, you'll get used to it. Um, all right, Anthony, let's start off with you. What do you think about the new head coaching hiring so far? I know we haven't had a show since Monday because I've been sick as a dog, but what's been your take on Joe Judge, Mike McCarthy, and all these guys? You know, I, I'm obviously a fan of the Mike McCarthy hire. Why is that uh, obvious? He's a loser. Because I've said he was my top choice for that job the whole time. Why? It was him or Greg Roman because of his resume, of his tenure. And you want to put it on Aaron Rodgers, and that, that's all well and good. You want to say he never ran the ball. He never really was given the personnel by the general manager. I think it's a completely situation in Dallas. I mean, look at Andy Reid going from Philly to Kansas City. No, he wasn't, hasn't won a championship yet. Uh, but, it, you know, it gets stale, and sometimes it changes good. Mike McCarthy, his entire offseason was spent oh, tweaking geez. the way he does things, um, incorporating analytics. So I like the hire for Dallas. I think Analytics is stupid, by the way. But It's the way the NFL is going. No, yeah, and it's stupid. That's I, I why there's so Joe many Judge, bad teams and I, I, bad I think coaches. Joe Judge was a desperation hire by the Giants. Uh, their guy was rural, and, and he, you know, the Carolina Panthers didn't let him leave the building. Yeah, and that was a stupid hire, too. I mean, he turns around franchises wherever no, he goes. No, he doesn't. He turned around college teams. That's a little bit different than turning around a professional football so, team. So, but he hasn't had a chance. We don't know yet. Yeah. Um, all I know You're is the the one has... seven years, $60 million. That's stupid. I just think that's the way the NFL is going with uh, head coaching contracts in the first year. Yeah, it is stupid because most of these guys don't make it past two years. And then you're paying them forever. And I think Mike McCarthy, if you watch this press conference with Jerry Jones, it'll tell you what it's going to be, which is the same as always. He's going to do what Jerry says. All this is up to Jerry. Jerry's still running a team. So my problem is not so much with the Mike McCarthy hire. My problem is with Jerry Jones still wanting to be in charge of football operations. But that's that. But that's not going to change. Yeah, so it doesn't matter who the coach is there. The Cowboys are never winning another Super Bowl under that. So should they just not have a coach? They shouldn't even have a team. That'll just should let Jerry just coach the Jason team. Jason Garrett? They ought to just let Jerry. I mean, you might as well keep Jason Garrett. What's the difference? I mean, you cannot be the head coach of a football team if you don't have – what was the old Bill Parcells saying? You know, if if you want me to cook the dinner, at least let me shop for the groceries. You know, and, according to you, there's like three head coaches. One of them's Belichick, and the other two are deceased. Of what? I like Doug Peterson. There's a lot of coaches okay. I like. I like the kid. Oh, I like you know, the guy. But I'm just saying, you're, you're, you know, it's, it's Belichick, it's Peterson, it's Paul Brown. It's you Paul know. Brown's dead. Right. That's what I mean. I like Brian Flores. I love the guy in Buffalo, McDermott. I think he's a great coach. I think John Harbaugh is a great coach. I could give you probably seven or eight guys that I think are great okay, coaches. Okay, but there's 32 teams. Yeah. But those teams will not hire anybody. And they all need a coach. And, and, and you have to give these guys a shot. But what we see is a majority of people hired fail. Because they do the same thing. They they just bring in retreads and they bring in guys that aren't ready. But you act like this isn't Ron Rivera going to – this isn't Ron Rivera. This isn't Marvin Lewis. Mike McCarthy's won a Super Bowl. Uh, it, you, if you actually put his resume up against Sean Payton's, they're, they're a mirror image of each other. Yeah, actually, they're not. But No? No. 
And, and I don't think Sean Payton's one of the great coaches in the world either. That guy chokes too. I don't like Andy Reid. I don't care. I mean, I watch these teams, and what I see with Mike McCarthy is the Pillsbury Doughboy sitting up next to Jerry Jones telling Daddy he's going to do whatever he's told. What do you think, Sam? I forgot Sam was with us. We usually don't have a guest. <laughs> Out of all three of those coaches, I'd say they're good coaches, but you are right. There is a problem. They're, it's close but never close enough, and they get satisfied with the success they have versus the success that could be. Well, I, I think the big problem is – I mean, I, I just, McCarthy to me is soft. His teams are soft. And I don't think taking a year off and watching a bunch of film is going to change that. And it's not because it's the Dallas Cowboys. It's because I just don't think anything's changing with Jerry Jones. Jerry Jones doesn't want to bring an Urban Meyer or a Lincoln Riley in because they're going to want to, they're going to want some control and he doesn't want to give that up. No, no, he doesn't. He's very controlling as we've seen over years i think it could be better with the new head coach but i don't i don't think it would be that much better we'll put it like this um anthony if mike mccarthy would have been the dallas cowboys coach the last 10 years would anything have been different i don't know yeah now he had bill parcells and bill parcells got out of dodge too because he didn't like the thing, and he was told that he was going to have some control. And he got him to the playoffs with Quincy Carter. But And the Joe Judge thing, wasn't he one of the writers for Beavis and Butthead, Anthony? Back in the that day? was Mike Judge. Oh, okay. Same thing. That's probably his dad. Um, let's go ahead and look at the NFL playoffs, because me and you are going to disagree about Mike McCarthy probably for the next 10 years, which is good for the show. Good for the, show. Um, the Minnesota Vikings. Um, against the San Francisco 49ers. What do you think here, Anthony? Because I think this game is going to be a lot closer than people think. You know, I'm, I know on my show yesterday, I had said, and, and Mike Hawk didn't like to hear it, that if it's a close game, I think Minnesota ends up winning. If the 49ers are going to win, they're going to have to set the tone early, get off to an early lead, and make the Vikings play from behind. Because I think <laughs> if Dalvin Cooks gets going, um, it's going to completely shake up that 49ers defense uh, because it, that's going to enable Kirk Cousins to do what he does best, and that's get into that play-action pass mode uh, and then pick your secondary apart. And as talented as that 49ers defense is, um, I think both of these teams are built to play with the lead. So whoever is down by a score to first is going to lose this game. All right, Sam, and what do you think? And the closer this oh. game is, I think Minnesota wins it. All right, Sam, what do you think? Uh, I think it comes down to who has more turnovers. It depends on whether the pass rush gets to Kirk Cousins or whether the Vikings defense is able to make a play or two on Jimmy Garoppolo. I honestly think it's whoever is going to get more chances because both these offenses do I, – I, both these offenses have good quarterbacks, but I wouldn't put them in the excellent category, either of them. So I think it comes down to who gets – more chances and who makes less mistakes, really. And I would have the 49ers winning, actually. That's every football game. I think what you got here is you've got two of the best defensive lines in the NFL. Um, I think the 49ers had the better offensive line. The thing that stands out to me, you talked about the excellent 49ers defense, Anthony, but also is it not true that when we look at the first half of the season, they were giving up 11 points a game. The last half of the season, they're giving up over 25 points a game. This has been an entirely different defense, and I know they've had injuries, and I know D. Ford's coming back, Quan Alexander's coming back, but how healthy can these guys be? And they've struggled against the run for the last few weeks. That's why I think Minnesota has an excellent chance here because it's not just Dalvin Cook. It's also Madison. Um, you've got Thielen, if he's healthy, if they're running the ball and you got Thielen and Diggs running downfield here, I think the Vikings are going to win this game. Yeah, and there might be a little bit of concern with with Thielen and Diggs. I know Diggs is is uh, he has some kind of an un, uh, unknown illness. Thielen has that cut, but these guys are going to be out there. Yeah, the question is how much can they perform? So we got Sam with the 49ers. Who do you got, Anthony? I'm going to go with the Minnesota Vikings. Now, you're not doing this just to get under Mike Hoff's skin, are you? 
No, I, I actually, because Mike even, he, you know, he kind of backed himself into a corner. He said, I think Jimmy Garoppolo is going to make a couple of mistakes. And I said, yeah, and those mistakes are going to cost him the game. Yeah, and the thing so is. So I'm going to go off in that narrative where Jimmy G is going to choke in the big spot. Well, see, I don't, I don't even know if it's so much choking. Game. I mean, is it choking or is it just the first time he's been in a moment like that? And. Kirk Cousins has been in a moment like this, even though he wasn't successful in the playoffs, but he's played in a lot bigger games. Mike Zimmer, this is the other thing. Mike Zimmer has been a head coach in situations like this, situations bigger than this. Shanahan is not. And remember well, when he, Shanahan he, he was, was the OC? He was in the Super Bowl. Yeah, but he wasn't a head coach. whether it was Quinn or Shanahan, they blew it. Yeah, but the other thing is this. Being a head coach is a lot different – and being the coordinator, if you know what I mean. So we'll see if he can run it. All right, next up, we have another interesting matchup. All these games are basically more than a touchdown spread in Vegas, but I think all of them are extremely interesting. And now we got the Houston Texans against the Kansas City Chiefs, Sam. What do you think are the keys here? Because remember, the Texans have already beaten the Chiefs once this year. Yes, they have. I think it comes down to whether uh, they can shut down, uh, pardon me, Pat, Patrick Mahomes. I think that's what it comes down to, because if you just let Patrick Mahomes rain TDs on you, it doesn't really matter how well you're going to do on the other side of the ball, because they're going to have more possessions than you. Yeah, and my concern here, Anthony, is, I mean, can the Texans run the ball successfully in this game? Because we know that's what Kansas City struggles with, and I don't see a run game here that can get that done. Um, Carlos Hyde and Duke Johnson, I, I mean, can they run the ball? Yes. Can they run the ball effective enough to um, do what they need to do to win this game? I don't know if Carlos Hyde and Duke Johnson is it. Yeah, but when uh, this, I think this could potentially be a shootout, especially if Wolf Fuller plays. But eventually, I think the Kansas City Chiefs, um, uh, you know, on defense, they're going to step up. Tyron Matthew was a Texan last year. I, I think he's going to be the difference maker in this game. Yeah, I think the big thing is if Will Fuller plays and if he's healthy, because I still may be the only person out there, but I like Deshaun Watson more, and I like Patrick Mahomes or Lamar Jackson. Man, it's, it's, it's close with those guys. I don't think it is. I think Deshaun Watson is special. Um, I think Patrick Mahomes might be, and I think Lamar Jackson might be, but I think Deshaun Watson is. If you watch what he did last weekend, he put a team on his back and carried him across the finish line, and I think I'm going with the Chiefs here because I just think the Chiefs have too much talent, and I'm not going to pick too many upsets this weekend. So uh, I'm going to go with the Chiefs to win this game. Um, Carlos Hyde ran for 116 yards in that last win. He would have to have a game similar to that, I think, for them to have a chance. I don't think he will. So I would say the Chiefs by 7 to 10 points, Sam. What do you think? It's about what I was thinking. Again, I think it comes down to whether they can shut down Patrick Mahomes or not, and I don't think they will. Well, you don't have to shut him down. You can just slow him down. What do you think, Anthony? I, I, you broke up there for a second. Who are you picking, Texans or Chiefs? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go Kansas City, and I think they cover the nine and a half. Yeah, but I'll tell you what. If this is a touchdown game with five minutes or less to go, I will then switch my pick to the Texans because I think Deshaun Watson is that good. Next up, the Seattle Seahawks will play the hated Green Bay Packers. Now, the question here is, Anthony – do you think the Packers will win this game just because the officials are going to give them every call known to man to get a win? This is a really tough game to pick. I think these two teams match up really well because Seattle is missing their top two running backs, but they're getting a really good matchup facing the Packers defense that struggled a little bit to stop the run. Uh both of these quarterbacks can win multiple ways. I think both of these teams can win multiple ways. Both of these defenses struggle to contain the tight end. So these are two teams and two quarterbacks that match up really well. Um, 
Seattle's only lost, what, once on the road this year? Green Bay's usually tough at home, even though you don't think home field advantage matters. Um, I'm going to go with Green Bay here. All right. And I don't have a lot of reasons why. I, I just – it could be one of those situations where whoever has the ball in their hands uh, last wins. All right, Sam, what do you think? Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. It's going to come down to who has the ball last because both of these quarterbacks and these offenses are very clutch. I've done it multiple times this year apiece. It's going to come down to who has the ball last, and I think Seattle will put themselves in a position to do that, so I have them for the upset. Yeah, I'm looking at this a different way. I'm just going with the team with the better quarterback, and, of course, that's Russell Wilson. I like Seattle to win this game. Um, I think DK Metcalf is going to have a huge game here um, with Lockett. I mean, they could get it done throwing the ball. I think they're going to have a hard time running the ball, of course. But I, I'm just going to err on the side of Russell Wilson, who is four and 4-3 against Aaron Rodgers. But Wilson has never won in Green Bay, so he's going to have to get that done. But I think this is a very tight matchup. But I'm going to go with Russell Wilson because I think he's a little bit better. You know, what? I, I want to note here – on the Packers and that people think, you know, Aaron Rodgers, no, he didn't have his normal Aaron Rodgers type season. Uh, but he was also uh, the third, I don't know how to work this right, third most drops of any quarterback in the league. So what you're saying is he doesn't sense. throw. Where his doesn't... players dropped 34 balls which could have made a big difference. He was still decently efficient, number one quarterback in money throws, number one or two quarterback in deep ball attempts, just a matter of his players not named Devontae Adams holding on to the football. And I think Jimmy Graham playing against his former team, we've seen Jimmy Graham drop a ton of balls in the end zone. I think he's going to have to come up big. Well, plus there could be snow in this game. I think it's supposed to end early Sunday morning. They need to move the game to like 9 in the morning because I love snow football games. All right, don't let anybody respond. I thought everybody liked snow football games. All right, next up, we've got Aaron the Aaron bowling... Rodgers loves snow football games. He kind of for six touchdowns against the Giants earlier in the year. That was the Giants. So he loves that them. doesn't count. I'm pretty sure he throws for six touchdowns against the Giants whether it snows or not. But next up, the Baltimore Ravens against the Tennessee Titans. This, I think, is maybe the most interesting matchup to me all weekend, Anthony. And this is a game that could be over in about an hour and a half. Because I think these teams are both going to run the ball. I'm trying to make a case really hard to, to try to make a case for the Tennessee Titans, but I just don't think I can. I think this is going to be a, a, a big time Baltimore Ravens beat down with or without Mark Ingram on the field. You know, the Titans defense, they show up sometimes, but they're really uh, a middle of the pack unit and they're not getting the Patriots uh, inept offense this week. They're getting the Baltimore Ravens. Nobody has really, seem to stop them and I don't think the Tennessee Titans are going to so we're going to have to see a lot of Derrick Henry and they have to find somebody outside of A.J. Brown to throw the football to for for them to have a chance yeah I I agree Sam what do you think yeah I think the Ravens are going to win they're going to have to find if if the Titans want to win though they're going to have to give it to more than just Derrick Henry I think that was sufficient enough for the Patriots I don't think on any planet is it going to be good enough to beat the Ravens, and I don't see them shutting down that offense either. Hmm. All right. Um, I think the way to shut down that offense is if Derrick Henry has a huge game. I mean, that's the key. But, like you said, this is not New England. Tannehill's going to have to throw a lot better than what he did the last game where he was absolutely terrible. Um, It was garbage, yeah. Yeah, the Ravens. And he has are, the second most wins against Bill Belichick and Tom Brady. Next, not named Peyton Manning. Who right? Which is kind of crazy. Yeah, and he hadn't really played that long, has he? But six, seven years at most. Yeah, he has, he has five wins. Huh. It's because Miami, though. Miami has a weird tendency to beat New England at least once a year. Well, they so. also have a weird tendency to play at the end of the season when Miami is playing for nothing, and neither is New England because they've wrapped everything up. 
course, this year, though, <laughs> I bet New England wishes they wouldn't have lost to Miami. They had been hosting. Well, didn't New, Eng- New England had to win that game, right? Yeah, well, they didn't week. have to, but they had. if they would have won that last week's game against Miami, then they would have been hosting a game this week, and they wouldn't have had to play in the right. wild card round. Right. So I still think they would have lost. We probably, but with a week off, you never know. Plus, Bill Belichick with less talent and an extra week to prepare could make a difference there. Let's remember, this is not like New England got blown out by Tennessee. Oh no, very good game. I don't know if it was a very good game, very boring game. I thought, but I, I think for the Titans to win this game. Derrick Henry would have to run for 200 yards again. Um, I I don't think he's going to do that. I think the Ravens are going to win this game and advance to the AFC Championship game. And I don't know. I just wish the Titans had another receiver or two because I think if they did, this would be a legit Super Bowl team right now, Anthony. No, I I agree. But they, they, you know, (laughs) outside of – you have A.J. Brown, you know, Corey Davis, he's a bust – um, Adam Humphreys, I don't even know if he's going to play. <laughs> Tajay Sharp, I, I mean, they, they're really hurting that receiver. Yeah. So, and Sam, not saying that, you know, my, so are the Ravens outside of their rookie, Marquise Brown, but the Ravens also have Mark Andrews and a couple of other really talented tight ends. Well, I think the difference there is Mark Andrews, and I think he could be the difference in this game, too. Oh, he is going to be because the Titans have a hard time defending the tight end. Yeah, that's my problem there. So I, I think the Ravens end up winning this game something like 27 to 13. Um, Sam, since you have failed miserably today, go ahead and give us our your Super Bowl picks for this season at the end of the year because we won't have you back. I'm just kidding, by the way, Sam. But who do you like to win the Super Bowl right now? Uh, as for getting to the Super Bowl, I like <laughs> the 49ers in Kansas City. Okay. And I, I could see Kansas City winning the Super Bowl. What do you I don't think, think Jimmy Anthony? Garoppolo will. You can't pick the Eagles now, Anthony. Uh, <laughs> I like um, Kansas City and Minnesota. A rematch of Super Bowl Four. Sam, City, since you're Minnesota. young, who won Super Bowl Four? I, I think that's realistic. I think that's extremely realistic. I think it is, too, because I think whoever wins Minnesota-San Francisco is going to the Super Bowl. And the Kansas City, they got to go to Baltimore. John Harbaugh against Andy Reid. I hate to say this, but I would probably say Baltimore against Minnesota. I don't know. I mean, that's fair. I just don't like it. (laughs) Nobody cares what you like, Sam. You're a Lions fan. Can't like anything. But I can tell We're you like this. that kid in the room. Nobody has the heart to kick out. Hey, I know. I am too because I'm a Bengals fan. But next year, we're going to be sitting here talking about the playoffs and the Bengals and Lions are getting ready to tee it up in the Super Bowl. And Anthony's going to wonder, what happened to Mike McCarthy? He already got fired because he went 1-15. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, hell. Anything else NFL-wise you want to talk about, Anthony? No, I think we got it all out there. What do you think about Andy Dalton going to New England? Is that the rumor? You never heard that? Yesterday, I forget what show, but there was a couple different guys that were reporting that Bill Belichick really likes Andy Dalton and wouldn't mind Dalton replacing Tom Brady. I think it was Peter King that originally broke that story. I would like it, right? Well, Andy Dalton could win there. Now, the question is, do you think Belichick's coming back to New England? Yes. Maybe the Browns. I think Belichick's back. Brady's gone. Brady goes to Los Angeles Chargers. Do you really think Brady's going to leave? Yes. What do you think, Sam? No, I don't think he'll leave. Especially with that being, like, his last throw being a pick six. I I think he'll want to finish it off with New England, and I don't think – management will kick him out either yeah i i don't know though because they're gonna have to pay him what he wants which if is you're gonna brady, be a lot more why normal. do you want to go back why do you want to go back if you're brady because it's the patriots why wouldn't you 
Yeah, your worst season was 12 and 4. You, I mean, because Bill Belichick arrogantly replaced Rob Gronkowski with a combination of Matt Lacoste, Ben Watson, who's now retired, and Steve, or, you know, what's what his name? Ryan Izzo. And the only competent tight end is now playing in the divisional round for the Seattle Seahawks. They traded Jake Hollister for a seventh round pick. I know. They I, traded I, a second round pick for Mohamed Sunu. When they could have had Emmanuel Sanders. Yeah. So, so if I'm Tom Brady, player. what? unless I'm getting guaranteed, I, I would need more than a handshake to know that I'm going to get a better offensive line and, and better supporting cast. Because Brady's not dumb. Brady knows at this point in his career, he knows he can still win. I think he also knows that he needs a better supporting cast. Yeah. And I also think this. Uh, the reason I ask about Belichick staying there is, what if Belichick doesn't want Brady back, but we know Robert Kraft does? And we've already seen with the Jimmy Garoppolo situation that when it comes down to it, Robert Kraft will pull his weight if he has to. And then you just make Josh McDaniels the head coach. And Brady and what, Bill, Belichick goes back to Cleveland? Oh, don't ever say that. <laughs> That's the one thing that might Dude, be able no. to save Cleveland. We don't want that. But, I mean, seriously, is, is that that big of a stretch? Uh, no. I don't know. But I, 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 it's hard for me to see Kraft. I, I guess if you had to make a choice. Tom Brady, realistically, is only going to play a few more years. Bill Belichick can probably coach another 10 if he really wanted to. Yeah, but I think... He's 70. It, he can coach till he's 80. But if Kraft was going to go that way, wouldn't he have let Belichick keep Jimmy Garoppolo when he wanted to? I mean, well, they won two more Super Bowls. And how about this? How much longer? Because Robert Kraft is a heavy drinker and really a miserable human being. How much longer does he have? <laughs> Uh, I don't know. You know, I mean, he's cheated on multiple wives. He's always drunk. I mean, he can't have too much longer, so maybe he's just looking short-term. You know, he figures he's got a couple years left. Tom Brady's got a couple years left. He'll just roll with it. I'm just saying, the New England thing, I think, could go more than just one or two different ways. I think this could end up about three or four different things that could happen here by the time this is done. But, and if I'm the Chargers, do I want Brady? Do I want Brady over who? Would I don't I know. Brady That's Brady the point. Over... Because Phillip Rivers, I think, is pretty much shot. Yes. But if you bring and that's Brady it. in. If it's Brady or Rivers, I, I'd rather take Brady for a year. I would, too. Sam, you agree? I do. I don't think it would make the total difference for the Chargers, but I think it would help. Um, I don't know. They would have to get some luck. I think Brady's too. I think part of this is Brady's starting to get a little older. He's not as good as he was. So I don't think he would make enough of a difference that he could have in his prime than he could now. I don't know. I, I didn't see a lot of slippage from him. I just saw a lot of guys that couldn't get open this year, Anthony. I think it, there was a little bit of a regression, but he didn't have any help. Uh, and, yeah. and if you inserted Tom Brady, well, th this was the here's Chargers the thing. team last season that made it to the divisional round of the playoffs. Good, Sam. You know, you you go from Julian Edelman um, and 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 really a bunch of guys to you're going to either have Melvin Gordon or Austin Eckler. They're both free agents, but the Chargers will sign one. Then they'd have Justin Jackson as their two. Uh, you have Keenan Allen and Mike Williams, Hunter Henry at tight end. I, I think they would need to upgrade that line a little bit. And then a, a defense that's remarkable when they're healthy. So I, I think Tom Brady would certainly put them over the hump or at least give them a better chance than they have in five or ten years. All right, go ahead, Sam. I think this is the uh, greatest excuse I've ever heard. Because here's the thing. It's always been Tom Brady makes players better. Tom Brady carries the team. It's always been about how he, no matter what situation he's been in, has made the team go forward. 
And I think now the excuse is, oh, well, Tom Brady's not doing as well, so we're going to start blaming it on the other players instead of facing the reality that Tom Brady isn't as good anymore. Um, Tom Brady took a team with absolutely almost no talent, and they were 12-4 and four this year, Sam. I'm just telling you, this is the excuse that always comes up. And it's always Tom Brady carries the team, and this year he can't. So people are making the excuse that it's now the team's fault. And he had a fantastic defense, by the way. That's half the reason they won most of those no, games. No, he didn't. He didn't have a fantastic defense. I don't think it was. A Pardon fantastic me. Defense. Did you look at the first half of the? Did you look at the first half of the season? Were you well, there? Let. Oh, well, how about this, Sam? <laughs> Since you want to get a little smart and uppity with me, do you realize who they played in the first half of the season? <laughs> yeah, uh, they played the Jets what twice during that period. Uh, that's when the Jets sucked too. That was before the second half of the season. The Jets but always suck. How about this? Um, you're a Lions fan. Just be quiet, all right? The Jets have at least won a Super Bowl. You're a Bengals during fan. Super Bowl years. I, my team's been to two, Sam. But when you look at the Patriots, <laughs> let's see. They shut down the Steelers and the Dolphins and the Jets. They held the Bills to 10 points. They shut down the Redskins, the Giants, the Jets, the Browns. That was the first half of the season. Second half of the season, the Ravens put 37 on them. The Texans put 28 on them. I don't think they knew them. how to solve Lamar Jackson. That's why. What's that got to do with anything? If they had a great defense, they'd have been able to. Correct? I'm just saying. Every their team defense, makes mistakes. Their defense was really good, but it's not like it was an all-time defense. Because second half of the season, 37 to the Ravens. They gave up 28 to the Texans. They gave up 27 to the Dolphins. <laughs> and That I, always makes me laugh is when they lose to the Dolphins. Well, that and, makes, and the that thing is this. When you look at the Titans in that playoff game, I'm sorry. You cannot have a really good defense if you can't stop the run. And all year, the problem that the Patriots had was stopping the run. And they gave they up. They held them to 14 20. points. You what? ought to expect your offense to be able no, to get more than that. No, wait a second. That. It doesn't the, matter. The they Titans, held them to 14. They gave up almost 200 yards on the ground. 200 yards on the ground, Sam. That doesn't matter. And how many points did that result in? Because that's what matters at the end of the they day. They scored how 20 many points. points. That means. Yeah, and the defense. Yes, and only wait seven. Wait a second. Don't have them. This goes both ways, Sam, because you're sitting here saying that, well, they only gave up 14 points. Well, they gave up, you know, too many points because they only scored 13. Now, maybe yeah, the reason – wait a second, ought to Sam. be able to get more than that. Sam, I, you don't have to let me speak here. Maybe the reason that right. the Patriots only got 13 points is because they were never on the damn field because they gave up 35 carries for 182 yards to Derrick Henry. A lot of those drives ended with bad passes from Tom Brady, one of which – with the pick six, they had more chances than. Whoa! Get off the pick six thing. The pick six yeah. thing was the best. They were at their own one yard line with like twenty seconds left, Sam, and the ball was tipped. Yeah, it was a bad pass into terrible coverage or into the, great. The coverage. game was Pardon over. Me. They were on their own one yard they, line, correct? Or own five yard line with like twenty seconds left. Don't act like Tom Brady's pick six cost them the game. I'll tell you. You what just don't like Tom game. Brady off- because you're a Lions fan and you're used to people that lose all the time, and Tom Brady's not that guy. I'll tell you this: Tom Brady has been a great quarterback most of his career until this year. I do not think he is as good this year as he has been in prior years. All right, he's and forty-two I think years that because old. Because the offense couldn't get it done, that's what cost him the game. Because fourteen points, that being held to that many points on defense, that's good. That's great defense in the NFL but Not if you can't score yards. more than 14 points that what? all right Tom Brady's bad season as you call it his team was 12 and 4 he threw 24 touchdowns eight interceptions and over 4,000 yards with a 61 percent completion percentage and almost every statistic that he has is well below average for who for the average of the NFL. 
so a three to one touchdown to interceptions and four thousand yards passing is well below average. His touchdown to interceptions, his interceptions, heck, his touchdowns. His he threw eight interceptions. Yes, well, eight interceptions average. in sixteen games is not bad, Sam. I'm just telling you. What? What are you telling me? Am I wrong here, Anthony? Are those stats bad? Are those well below average? No, I don't think so. No. See, Anthony said no, so now you're wrong. Because me and Anthony are on the same side, unless we're talking about the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> what? Yeah, Dallas well, is a mess. It's just Dallas true. No, don't, don't try to get off onto the Cowboys, because we know they suck, just like all of our teams suck. But, passing... Tom Brady is fifth as an offensive leader in passing yards, isn't he? So was Dak. Dak Prescott was first for a lot of the season. What kind of a stat? Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. Why would we bring up Dak Prescott was for a lot of the season? Because we're talking about for the entire season, passing stats. What did he finish? The fact that Brady threw for that many yards with that little help is a testament to Tom Brady. Yeah. You just said that he had no receivers and how he didn't make them better and everybody said he did. He obviously did because he threw for 4,000 yards. The only way we'll be able to tell is what happens next year. Oh, okay. With, well, you whatever. know what, Sam? That's not the way we tell because we just watch him throw for 4,000 yards, three to one touchdowns to interceptions. His offensive line was bad. His wide receivers nobody's ever heard of except for Julian Edelman that was hurt. And he still threw for 4,000 yards, three to one touchdown to interceptions. I think this, any other quarterback would be thrilled with those numbers. But since he lost the first round playoff game, it's Tom Brady's fault. You know what? There's probably very few quarterbacks that could have gotten this team to a 12-4 and record. Tell me this. How many picks should have Tom Brady thrown in that game had they not gone through the hands of people? It would have been three, all of which were his fault directly. What? That's not good quarterback play. What? That makes no sense. He threw one interception in that game, correct? Yes, I said should have. Think about well, how it. about this? The one Anthony, went through the person's hands, and the other one second. went through the lineman's hands. Anthony, hand. do we have a stat on how many drop passes the New England Patriots had this year? Um, yeah. And if, if it wasn't too many less than Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, so how many drop passes were there? I'm, I'm looking right now. They were one of the top teams. Yeah. Why doesn't that count, Sam? Because you're going to talk about a game where a couple people dropped interceptions he threw, but I'm pretty sure he's top five on the most dropped passes for him this year also. With 31. 31 dropped passes. That's two a game. But how many was it during that game? During that game, from looking at this, it was three. But you don't know because you didn't look. Huh? I'm looking at it right now. For that game, how many drop passes were there? Three drop passes. But you didn't bring that up. You didn't say, well, if you know, the thing is this. If I'm a quarterback and I don't trust my wide receivers, I'm not going to be as accurate. I'm not throwing the ball with the same confidence that I normally would if I trusted my wide receivers, Sam. That's fair. Okay, so we've agreed that I'm right. Anthony, do we want to talk about anything else? No, I think not. <laughs> oh, hell. See, this is the thing, Sam. If you weren't on, me and Anthony would still be arguing about Mike McCarthy. That's more boring, though. I just brought up a touchy topic. topic. No, you didn't. There wasn't nothing touchy. It's just, this is the thing. When you want to try to rip on Brady or Belichick, you just sound like you got sour grapes and you're jealous because you can't deny. I just got done saying they were great. Like no, until they, this they, year. Wait, they were great till this year, but the and talent, twelve and four is great. But I'm talking for that playoff game that sucked <coughs> all okay. around, including Brady. Yeah, they had a bad playoff game. So they've also been to how many Super Bowls in a row before they got knocked out at the playoffs this year? 
three. Watch, I'm, I'm making the call right here. With Brady, they will never go to another Super Bowl. Okay. If Brady stays there with Belichick, they will be back there next year. Because this is the thing. I'll at least be close to being right. You won't because for you to be right, they would have to not make the playoffs. What, to not win a Super Bowl? Yeah, because what I'm saying is this. If they lose in the playoffs next year, I'm going to say, hey, they were close. <laughs> yeah, and I'm going to say I was still right because I said Super Bowl. I said nothing about the playoffs. Yeah, so I wouldn't be surprised right if now, I wish I could get them to the playoffs. What you're doing is you're going to make a statement that a 43-year-old man with a 114-year-old coach can't make it to the Super Bowl anymore. All right. Okay. <laughs> That's calling your shot. All right, Anthony, anything else before we go? No, we got it all. All right, guys. Um, you want to tell everybody where they can follow you, Anthony? Yeah, you can follow me on Twitter at the Real NFL Guru. You can follow my show at the FF Face Off, and we can be found at all the top social media and podcast platforms. All right, Sam. At Samuel McG22 on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. All right, guys. I want to remind you, at 3 o'clock today, live, Randy Cross and myself will be on the preview to LSU Clemson game, and I'm going to see if we can get him on the preview to conference championship games next Friday with us, Anthony. If that's all right for you. That'd be awesome. Okay. It's a huge step up from Sam since he just took shots at Brady and Belichick. I'll tell you this. The NHL is more my thing, although I do know some things about the NFL. Huh. We just didn't talk about any of those things today. All right, guys, you can hear all of our shows on iHeartRadio, <laughs> iTunes, TuneIn, Spreaker, Stitcher, Spotify. For Sam McGinnis, Anthony Savino, I'm Mike Goodpaster. You've been listening to The Grueling Truth, where the legends speak. <laughs>